Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we celebrate the name of Jesus, and there is nobody else. Jesus was called Son of David as King, King of the earth and everything on it. And that day is coming. It is coming. And today's advanced study is, is about a new heaven and a new earth for the former things that passed away. And so if you brought your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. We start reading in verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. So to look at another passage in the New Testament on the same subject, please turn with me to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. We'll start reading verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things be dissolved, what manner of person ought you be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, look forward to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot or blameless. So brothers and sisters, God is going to destroy with fire and he's going to make a new earth and a new heaven. And if we are not in God's will, we will burn up with them. So now turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 11. We'll start reading verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war with them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom of Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. Now, brothers and sisters, these are eyewitnesses of our Lord. And they're going to prophesy, but they're going to be killed and left in the street for three and a half days. But then they're going to arise. They're going to resurrect, brothers and sisters, just like Jesus did, and ascend to heaven, just like Jesus did. Now, brothers and sisters, people think that these two prophets are Moses and Elijah, but they're wrong. It is Enoch and Elijah, because we must die to arise. And Enoch and Elijah are the only two humans never to die. And so those are the two prophets to come and be killed and left in the street for three and a half days and then arise and go to heaven. Now turn with me to the same book, Revelation chapter 14. We'll start reading verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him, who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Brothers and sisters, this is when the church gets brought up, because we are not appointed to the wrath. But brothers and sisters, we have to die to arise. That's why Jesus has a sickle in his hand. And it's going to be quick. 
So you must be ready to meet your maker face to face. Brothers and sisters, please turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll read verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And so, brothers and sisters, Jesus will come in the twinkling of an eye, and we will die and arise in a blink of an eye. Amen? Amen. So be ready. If you're not right with God, our Lord and Savior is long-suffering. That means He's patient. But don't wait to the last minute. We are in the last generation. Jesus is coming soon and you need to be right with him when he comes. He also says that he's lowly in heart. And that means that he's approachable. So if you're not saved, approach him. Open that door of your heart and let Jesus in. Amen? Amen. Remember, Paul describes his walk in Jesus with a course, running a course. And he says to run it to win. And brothers and sisters, that's what we have to do. Keep running that course to win the race. Carrying your cross all the way to the finish line. And we do that by taking Jesus Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. And brothers and sisters, we'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen. And so now, brothers and sisters, I invite you to continue reading about this. Before you read the Bible, I encourage you to ask God to open your eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to his word without doubting, and he will. He will give you understanding beyond understanding if you have the Holy Spirit in you. Amen? Amen. And every night when I go to bed, I pray to the Lord, to open my boys, my sons, eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to the Word of God. I encourage you to do the same. And brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. We're going to have a new body, but we're going to look the same. So we will recognize people that we know, loved ones, that make it too. So celebrate that in your heart, mind, and soul. Amen? Amen.